All right, so you ready to get started? All right, awesome. All right, let's do this. Three, two, one, let's do it, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hello, and welcome to the Disconnected Gamers Podcast, where we reconnect with life and gaming. I am one of your hosts, Andrew, also known as Jay Bond. With me, not as always today, Mike is not with us, but I have a very special guest. Uh, this will be an interview podcast. I have William, one of the co-founders from Gamer Sensei. Welcome aboard. Hey, Andrew. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to chat with you today. Yeah, this should be we, – we already started, but, you know, they'll have to – maybe I'll, like, <laughs> splice in some of that at the end just because it was – that was actually some good stuff. Um, so let's talk about what Gamer Sensei is so that people can understand what exactly it is that uh, that you guys do. Yeah, so I, I think the idea behind Gamer Sensei is pretty straightforward in the sense that we're a coaching platform for esports. So you come to our website, um, you can find a coach for any of, I think it's the 10 of the most popular esports today. So like League of Legends, Dota, Overwatch, Hearthstone, et cetera. Um, and we connect you with that coach for one on one team replay analysis lessons, you know, whatever you're looking for. Um, and I think, I mean, you know, in some sense, I mean, the business isn't like this exists in lots of other areas, right? Like, right. you know, if you're going to learn piano, you go and get a piano teacher. You know, if you decide you want to get better at baseball, you know, you get a baseball coach. Um, I think it, it, what's cool about it is, you know, the idea of esports being a truly advanced competitive space now, you know, there's now a need for uh, real coaching and one on one and group instruction. And so that's what we're filling with Gamer Sensei. Gotcha. Um, I apologize. His phone is ringing in the background. I totally didn't think about that when I was setting this up. D don't worry about it, Andrew. <laughs> um, the, the last time I did a podcast interview, uh, my team was playing League of Legends in the background, and you could hear them screaming. Like, every, <laughs> you know, it was so embarrassing. So. Uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, so that's – like the weird thing is, is I had never actually really seen anything like this before, but it always, it always begged the question like how do pro players – become pro i like because we talked about this before we we started the podcast i used to play csgo like before it was csgo when it was like 1.5 1.6 yeah and mm -hmm. my friends used to play like cal i i think was what one of the um like brackets was and like i never really understood one how they even got into it but two like that was i think the start of things like um what team speak and discord are now like ventrilo was i think what yeah. they used a lot and i never really thought about like where do you go like where do you source that and so it's kind of awesome to see that this is happening now especially where like it's more approachable for the um the filthy casuals of the world as i described myself earlier <laughs> you know for for players who just like even if you don't necessarily want to go pro or get into esports like this is a great tool for someone who just wants to get better at a particular game yeah i mean that's exactly right you know i think like the coolest thing about this platform is when we started it we didn't quite know where the market would be right mm -hmm. is it going to be people who just downloaded hearthstone and can't get through the tutorial you know is it going to be people who are you know prepping for major tournaments you know we we really didn't know and what we found is actually the service sort of really addresses everybody i mean what it comes down to is if you love a game and you're trying to get better at it you know coaching is a really useful way for you to spend some of your time um, and you know, there's kind of another thing I, I want to touch on as well that 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 you sort of alluded to, which is sort of the, you know the newness of coaching as a space, right. and you know it really has to do with just esports in general. You know I think um, a couple things have changed right now in the ecosystem that's making a business like Gamer Sensei possible. You know first and foremost among them I think is probably Twitch, right? Yep. Is with the rise and success of that platform now you know not only um, can you be a celebrity gamer, which, you know, I would argue, sure, you had, you know, a few people, um, you know, beforehand, uh, but I would argue it really didn't exist in the same way before the Twitch platform. Mm -hmm. um, so not only can you be a celebrity gamer, but you also have this whole class of people who now aspire to be celebrity gamers, right? right. Um, and, you know, this is now dovetailed with, you know, the rise in professionalization of esports events. You know, the best example of that is the Overwatch League, right? I mean, now right. all of a sudden you have, you know, all of the traditional sports money pouring into esports, you know, $20 million a seat type of thing. Um, you know, it's just created for the first time ever. Like, it's not, you know, aspiring to be one of 16 people at Atlantic Comdex, you know, who maybe wins a $500 check. 
you know, for the first time ever, it's really, it's aspiring to be, you know, a true celebrity athlete, um, just like basketball or soccer or football. And so, you know, that's changing a lot of things in the ecosystem. And it's also making a business like Gamer Sensei possible. Right. I mean, well, and, and even in addition to, to not just Twitch, like students in high school are now actually vying for scholarships to be professional esports players at colleges. Like it's even, it's even gone, gotten so big to the point where like, it's actually immersed itself into our education culture. Not in the sense that like after classes, we went and played video games. Like this is actually a part of your curriculum now. No, it's crazy. You know, Gamer Sensei, we've started to work with colleges even to to provide coaching to schools. Yeah. Um, you know, not just in the US where we work with people like Becker, but internationally we're working with schools now in Japan, like OCA and Tokyo School of Anime to to kind of help bring coaching to their students. So it it's honestly crazy. Um and it, not just in terms of how exciting the space is, but in terms of how quickly it's changing. Because, you know, it was just I think it was five years ago that um, Robert Morris University announced they we're going to have the first varsity esports program and people like were like what you know how could this possibly be a thing and now i think it was just last week all of england announced that they've introduced varsity like at the nat at the you know the the national level for the uk right um so it's it's pretty crazy how quickly the space is moving yeah uh, so let's let's uh let's tarantino it and we'll go back for a minute how did this yeah. start because i i did read a snippet uh one you went to harvard so you're pretty smart. Let's go. Let's go there. Yeah, there, um, there's always one admissions mistake. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you are you're in Har you're at Harvard. You're a video game player yourself. You get kicked off a t an esports team. Is that is that what I heard? I heard I saw a snippet it, yeah, about it, kind of like the the like brief version of the story. Yeah, I, I think that's essentially right. The timeline's a little bit different, Got but um, yeah, basically I, I was, you know, I graduated Harvard Business School um, along with one of my co-founders, Rohan Gopaldas. Um, you know, so we always had an interest in sort of, you know, doing what I would call like a proper scalable business, mm -hmm. um, you know, but, and, you know, he and I were best buddies and we just kind of never really had an idea, you know, and so we went off and pursued our separate careers. Um, and I'd always been a huge gamer. I mean, literally since the original Nintendo, mm -hmm. I've played so much, like, like my parents actually wouldn't let me have a consulate home. So I would go to my neighbor's house to play there. And I this did this happened so much. The neighbors stormed over to, you know, my parents' house one day and they just gave them the console. They're like, get this kid out of here. It's <laughs> like, take this console, but don't send him over. So I've I've always been a huge gamer. Um and, you know, at some point I was on a, an amateur team for for Heroes of the Storm. So don't judge me, guys. I know that, that probably brands me in a perhaps a, a too casual MOBA bucket. But I was on an amateur team with some, you know, really good friends. And, you know, we were trying to, to, to get better. And I, I was just we were losing all the time. And it was my fault, very honestly. And so. One night, my friends took me aside and they're like, William, you're fun to hang out with, but like we play this game, you know, it's more fun if we win. And literally every time we play with you, we lose. So we're going to kick you off the team. And I was like, no, no, guys, come on. You can't like you can't throw me out. Like, give, give me a chance. I'm going to do everything I can to get better. And so I started to try to do everything sort of I knew about as a gamer that could make me better. So, you know, I was reading guide sites for like builds for my heroes and advice on how to play them. You know, I was watching streamers on Twitch, I think it was like Chew8 was the big hot streamer at the time. I was watching him and a bunch of other guys. I was watching YouTube videos. You know, I was doing everything and like nothing was working. I was still just really bad. <laughs> and so finally, I was just kind of thinking to myself, I was like, oh, I'll go get coaching for this. You know, that's clearly what I have to do because when I'd wanted to learn squash, I got a squash coach. When I wanted to learn, you know, soccer, I got like a soccer coach. There's just, I'll go find this. And I started to look online and there, like, there wasn't anything. And I was a bit like, well, this is crazy. You know, I know esports is becoming a thing. I know, you know, it's really difficult. These are high skill cat video games. It sort of feels like this should exist. And so that was the genesis story behind this. So that was about when I called up Rohan and I said, look, I, I think we have an idea for a business here, you know, and we should try it out and see if there's something. And flash forward to now, you know, we've raised, I think it's six and a half million dollars to, to grow this company and sort of bring esports coaching to everyone, which is super cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's 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 kind of unbelievable. What was his response when you when you approached him and said like, "Hey, I have this idea." Oh, he was like, "You're crazy!" Like, no one's gonna want to do that. And I was like, "No, no, no. Trust me. Like, you know, you should try it out." Because I, I think 
I think that's one of the things that actually is important to talk about coaching a little bit is um, I think people view gaming as very much an entertainment experience today, right? Still right. primarily. And so the idea of getting coaching for something like a video game, I still think to a lot of people feels a bit anomalous. It's like you wouldn't get coaching to watch Netflix. You know what I mean? Like right. it's my chill time. I'm just going to watch Netflix. And I, I think the thing that you realize after you've done a coaching lesson is that it just makes the game more fun. Um, it's like a better way. Like I find myself like it's actually now it's actually <laughs> difficult for me to play games now without a coach um, mm -hmm. because it changes the experience. It's simultaneously more relaxed and more intense. Right. It's more relaxed because you don't necessarily feel as alone in the game. It's like you have a shield mate or like, you know, kind of like a warrior at your side. There's this guy who's watching you play, who's giving you tips, who's giving you advice. Right. Like but it's simultaneously more intense because you're much more focused on all the decisions you're making. You know, you're really, as a player, you're really trying to push yourself to get better. So you're more present in the game. Um, and in that regard, it's just like, it, it's such, it's, it's just such a fun experience. It's really difficult to describe, but mm -hmm. um, uh, it, for me, it sort of changed the way I like to, to spend my primary time with these games. <laughs> Gotcha. Now, so I, I obviously I, I've spent some time on the website and um, it's really sharp. It's very well well done. Um, I I really think it's neat the way that like you pick the game and then you get this list of all of these people, you know, all of these coaches and their experience. So you can kind of tailor it to if you were like, oh, I really like the way this character, like this this character, this person plays because they've all they all seem to have been in the competitive scene uh or still are um was that something that was important to you when you were kind of sourcing coaches that they would be more visible to the people trying to oh yeah okay yeah, there, there's actually two two things you touched on there that I think are that I think are important. Um, one is um, just first of all the, the screening for the coaches, which is I think one of the critical pieces behind Gamer Sensei's success. So nobody is on the platform without passing a five step interview process with us, um, and that's really really important because we only want to be putting out the best coaches um, mm -hmm. for people to have lessons with because you know obviously like. If you if you're trying esports coaching for the first time and you hate the person you get on the other line, like you're never gonna book another lesson. You're done. Right. <laughs> um, so the quality is really important for us. Um, and you know, candidly, I think it's one of the big secrets of our platform's success is you know we show you lots of different coaches, you know, and we we try to help you search through and find the right one. But fundamentally, they're all really good. We try to make it so there are sort of no bad choices. Right. Um, and I mean, we're actually really selective as a platform. Now, I think we only take about 10% of the people who apply to be coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and when we're screening, we look for two things. One is we look for, are you really good at the game? And that turns out to be like the pretty easy part. Right, um, right. You know, because it's, it's relatively simple to vet somebody's background and, you know, make sure that they're pretty experienced. The, the harder part and what is a bigger element of the screening is, are you a good teacher? Right. Because think about like, you know, the classic example I like to give here is think of like the 16 year old who's really good at Halo, right? Like, yeah, they're probably really good at Halo or Call of Duty. You would not want that person to try to teach you anything, you know? Right, right. <laughs> and so that's the value of, um, of screening the platform. Um, but the other thing that's cool is you touched on sort of the searching functionality and being able to go through and find different people. And um, actually, it's something we're adding new search options. I think there's even new ones hitting this week, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we're constantly changing the search interface to make it better and more robust. But um, something that's just so cool about this business that we didn't fully appreciate when we started it is, look, when you're getting a tennis coach, let's say, like, who can you get as a tennis coach? It's got to be somebody who lives you know, near your house and near the tennis court that's near your house, right? right? So you have a very narrow universe of coaches that you can actually choose to get coached by. Um, that is just not true for esports coaching. It's a purely digital experience. So you can literally get the best player for the particular skill you want to improve at to teach you. 
And that's just so cool. So, you know, if you want to get Prolly from H2K to teach you, you know, to teach your team for League of Legends, like you can go do that. You know, you could also get like, you know, the guy from literally down the street from your house to teach you too. You right. know, you would know the difference, right? Because it's totally uh, this digital experience. So it doesn't matter how close they are for you. So it really opens up this global talent pool, mm -hmm. which is also super cool. So I think at this point we have coaches on, I, I want to say six continents on the platform. Um, we're still primarily English language right now, but we're actually rolling out new language support um, coming early next month um, for some of the major European languages. So that's been really neat as well. Was that something that that came from a demand for it or you just want to open up the platform to more people? Uh, it's definitely both, actually. Gotcha. We got I mean, we we just you know, you can imagine, right? Like, I think one thing that's another interesting cool thing about this business is how it's creating a livelihood for the coaches. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you think about it in esports today, it's tough to find ways to earn money, right? Sure. You know, you can like you can be a top ten streamer for the game, and you are all set, right? You can be one of the hundred people who plays on sort of a, a top team, you know, and you can be all set. But for everybody else who's really good at a game. Um, you know, there's there's really limited options, you know, winning small local tournaments or, you know, online tournaments doesn't really pay the bills. And so, sure. you know, we talked, you were an Overwatch fan. So there are 75,000 Grandmaster Overwatch players in the world, right? That is a huge pool of talented people. Not all 75,000 of them can be the number one Twitch streamer or play for Cloud9. And so the really cool thing about coaching is it provides a really broad and scalable income option for all these people. And then the nice surprise from this is it turns out we do get top players. You know, We get Shifty OW from Dignitas to coach Overwatch too because they love this platform as a way to engage with fans. Right. Um, and you know, even for them, they can make extra income on the side. So yeah. it's it's turned out to be really cool in that regard. Well, and and it's another resume builder. I mean, and and you actually spoke to exactly the the same thing that I always talk to about my friends who are partner Twitch streamers. Like at one point, like not to be that guy, but like at one point, you will not be as relevant as you were when you started playing a game. Either the game's going to change, or you know, for instances down the game you might not be as passionate about it and it's hard to shift to either a new game or you know get really good at another game really quickly and i was like so you know what do you do at that point and it's like the logical thing would be you go above and outside that game in a way of like either coaching or uh become an analyst or you are the you know um the broadcasters at the events themselves because you know everything about the game and you've seen it all happen and you know what these players are thinking in their minds like being a coach is like the next logical step it's almost like it was sitting there waiting and you were just like oh wait this is obvious yeah and that that's kind of like another reason why i think our business you know we accidentally timed it really well because you do have sort of the first generation of mm -hmm. Re -sport. Well, it's not really fair to say first generation, but you do have a, a large generation of esports pros that are effectively retiring now. Right. That are swapping to, you know, that that are older, that maybe, you know, can't sustain the APM that they could when they were a little bit younger, or maybe they still can, but their carpal tunnel is active. Right. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, you know, like literally you see it in football, you know, or basketball or all those people go. They become pro coaches. They open camps. They're guest commentators on, you know, CNBC. And that whole industry is starting to spring up now, which we get to be a part of. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. That's um, it's kind of neat to see it. Hold happen. on one. Yeah, yeah hold on one tiny second, Andrew. Yeah, one, sure. one moment. Hey, sorry about that. I just that's had to okay. step out for one second and make sure people weren't talking too too loudly outside the room. No, that's so. Okay. That is anyway keep going sorry it's really um, interesting no i was just saying like that's that it's it's neat to see because like you know we saw the evolution of youtube and then youtube gaming right because twitch became so big that youtube was like oh we've got to react and then you saw the esports community just explode and then you saw colleges and it's like and now you've got this aspect of it where it continues to make the network bigger right because now instead of these these professional esports players who either are retiring or like again there's even less spots to fill right because you have you know you've got i don't know what is it like five per team depending on the game and like one yeah, or two one and maybe two, you have one or, internet sir you know? yeah but yeah it's mm -hmm. and then you've got like one or two commentators now there's less spots 
to remain, you know, in the sort of spotlight, I guess, of these games, right? Like, now you can also be like, oh, I do commentating, but I'm also a coach. You know, I'm yeah, also uh, I'm also still available for people here. Yeah. No, I mean, and it's it's really cool. And we try to embrace that with Gamer Sensei. One of the things we do and why we're an interview-based platform is we let coaches set their own pricing, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, we can't you can be like, you know, uh, if you're somebody who's just hit Grandmaster and Overwatch and maybe you have a lot of talent as a teacher, but you still have, you know, yet to crack into the pro circuit, you can start coaching at, you know, 15, 20 bucks an hour versus, you know, if you're say, you know, a top tier player, you know, on a team like Dignitas or Cloud9, you know, you can come on board at like, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars an hour, whatever makes sense for you. You know, mm-hmm. just like Michael Jordan, if you want to get one on one instruction room, he's more expensive than say, you know, like the guy who runs, you know, your your local basketball camp. But sure. um the critical thing for us, like I said, is we maintain the quality. We make sure everybody's really, really good. So yes, you can go for more celebrity coaches, but honestly, and actually this is something that's interesting we should probably touch on is, you know, we've sort of discovered this entire other class of gamer, um, which are people who are just truly, truly phenomenal teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, which before, like literally, I mean, you could argue maybe they could exist a little bit as educational streamers like Purge for Dota or something. Yep. But, um, you know, they really didn't have a place in the ecosystem. And now we've discovered this, you know, entire class <laughs> of gamers who are just amazing instructors and you know they're getting booked by pro players on our platform for one-on-one teaching and these guys themselves it's not like they've ever you know finished a major tournament or you know played for a top team they just they have the ability to be super teachers you know right a great example of that is like my one of my favorite actually the guy i get hearthstone coaching from is a guy called fki shadow who you've you've never heard of him like you can't find him he's not in any tournament results but i think he's the best hearthstone coach on the platform he's trained people like you know remo ray from starting the game to complete for the the Switzerland national team, you know, so like he's and he's literally just somebody who we created that opportunity for. Um, he can now be a full time Hearthstone coach, um, and that's a skill set that just wasn't really served in esports before. Gotcha. No, that's fin- that's that's really that's kind of awesome to hear because it like I always loved Twitch for the fact that it gave people an opportunity they didn't have otherwise in the sense that cuz you had, you touched on it earlier people always looked at education uh, education they looked at gaming as as a hobby not something that could become an educational thing or a business plan like right like some of these people's business plans is becoming an esports player and that's it's so foreign to like my parents and like some of my friends even cuz they just don't see it as a um what's the word i'm looking for as like a not a goal but like it's just your that's your like your business plan in life right like you want to do this because this is this is your passion and yeah no it's it's really it, like it's it just is a way it's to like make really, money like yeah it's and do what you love <laughs> yeah i mean it's really fun and it, like in in retrospect i mean like you know we shouldn't be surprised right because you know there's you can any competitive human activity you know should have a class of people who are experts in it and whose job it is you know to teach others and we've seen that you know that's why you can get art instructors that's why you can get you know um golf teacher you know it should exist for everything anything that humans you know believe is sort of a worthwhile endeavor that should exist I, i think the difference is just gaming as a space has matured so quickly and so fast and esports, which is sort of the logical, I don't want to say pinnacle because that's not necessarily fair because I, I also play a lot of games that aren't esports and I just love gaming in general. Sure. Um, but maybe at least is the competitive aspect of gaming. It's sort of become the pinnacle. Um, you know, this, this should exist for, and it's just the generation that's growing up now won't look at this any differently than, you know, being really good at chess or being really good at basketball. This is just going to be a valid competitive way to spend your time. Exactly. Um, but there definitely is a generation gap right now, I think, which is actually funnily enough, like one of the big customer base we got in gamer sense, we get parents booking coaches to try to learn the games that their kids play. Like you get dads and moms who are like, you know, I want to play Overwatch with my daughter and not be a total failure, you know, and weigh them back. Like, you know, can you get me up to shape, you know? Right. Um, so it's funny. It's also cool that that's, um, you know, another use again of our, our platform that again, we, we had never considered. So hmm. that's kind of awesome. Well, so 
Um, we've covered a lot, and I feel like I should offer you one last opportunity because we're getting we're hitting the half hour mark. Um, what is one thing that you would want to convey to either the average gamer or someone who's looking to get into esports? Like, what's the one thing you want them to to kind of grasp? the quickest when they go yeah. to Gamer Sensei? Like, what's the what's the one, like, what's the pull? What's the elevator pitch type pull for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a really good question. So I I, I think, I mean, like, the, the fundamental thing I'd want to say is, like, just, just try it. I mean, it's right. like, you should try anything like this once because it's a cool, different experience. Just give it a shot, and and you'll see for yourself how different the coaching piece is. But, like, the, the elevator pitch I would make to somebody who's looking at coaching and is like, ah, I don't want to do this. I don't know. It's 15 bucks. Like, is it, you know, is it worth it? Like, the elevator pitch I would make is, look, like, you're somebody who the one thing for coaching to be worth it for you, you have to at least like the game, right? So we're past that point, you know? So you're somebody who really enjoys this game, who's playing it for fun recreationally. Like, what if I told you there was another way you could experience this game that would help you get a lot better at it quickly? So you're winning more, which these are competitive titles. It's the exact thing you want to do. Plus, you're doing it with a fellow gamer and you're helping them, you know, earn a living and a livelihood off the game. Like, why wouldn't you, you try it out? and see what it can do for you. And then, you know, like, honestly, I mean, the one thing we see on this platform again and again, once you try it, you'll be hooked. You'll keep coming back. So that would be my pitch to get somebody to try it. That, that works for me. Um, all right. So I guess we will we'll close out this episode. Um, Gamersensei.com, S-E-N-S-E-I.com. Uh, Twitter and Facebook, I'm assuming there's a... Uh, yep, same Gamer Sensei app, A-P-P. So G-A-M-E-R-S-E-N-S-E-I, and then app like A-P-P. Mm -hmm. And if people want to find you, are you also available on the social medias of the world? Oh, yeah, I'm... I'm a, I'm a popular guy on social media. So if anyone wants to get in touch with me directly, actually, you know, one thing I'll say is I always love to hear from anybody who's using the Gamer Sensei product, you know, as a co-founder, it's mm -hmm. super important. So anyone can always reach me directly, William at Gamersensei.com. And I really do read all of the emails I get. It may take me a couple of days to dig through my inbox sometimes, but as anyone who's ever emailed me asking like randomly to see if they can get in touch with the co-founder to see about a coach, like I always write back. Um, and if somebody wants me to follow me, on Twitter, I'm at William underscore Collis. Gotcha. Awesome. Um, so that has been this interview episode with William from Gamer Sensei. Again, I really appreciate you taking some time to uh, to talk to me and uh, our listeners about uh, what it is you guys do. I think it's really awesome. I'm really glad you came on the show. Oh, are you kidding, Andrew? I had a blast. It was really, it was a really great time chatting. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks again. Thanks. Bye. Bye.